And now we're all caught up. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this guy. As you can see, he's backing his ass in here. Now that's one of the things that has changed with driving truck, that back in the day, um, if you were gonna have an issue or somebody was gonna run into your truck, they would honk and let you know. In today's generation of drivers, they would rather get their phone out to record it and watch you back into somebody else's truck. That is the difference. I actually had that scenario happen not too long ago where things could have been avoided, things happened and nobody said a word. Uh, by the time I stopped, everything got situated. There was three people sitting in their driver's seat watching this scenario unfold. So the least I can do if this gentleman is gonna run into my stuff is I'm gonna honk the horn and let him know that, hey, you're gonna run into my shit. So with that being said, now that we are all caught up, you've seen that delays happen, things happen. It's one of those scenarios that sometimes in trucking you cannot avoid. That's where patience is key. Patience is important. So we did go to the shop. We did get some stuff served. We did get uh, the truck washed. Once we got the truck washed, we did get the mud flaps replaced. We did get some airbags repaired. We did get all the fluids replenished and an oil change done on the truck. Replace our chains and binders. What else did we do? Return some tools to some of the guys in the shop. And I think there was a couple other things that got addressed. Oh yeah, exhaust leak, did some miscellaneous other stuff. Uh, and it was good. Now you ask yourself, well, why don't you get this stuff done all the time? I do not actually park my truck at Procknow, the place that I currently work for. Um, because we are an exclusive hauler for a company out of the town that I reside in. So since we haul stuff from that slash, I guess, staging area or shipping yard or from that establishment, he allows me to park my truck at that establishment. And I literally, I literally, I live, I don't know, 10 minutes down the road. So I make sure that obviously my truck is safe. I make sure that it is DOT compliant, but it, the list kind of adds up when you don't get to the shop for two months. Now you ask yourself, well, why would you spend time when you should be driving washing your truck and that is because you got to ask yourself okay in the trucking industry when you're rolling through the dot scale and you have a cantankerous turd of a truck where the shit's falling off the side and it's covered in road grind doesn't look like it's hit a car wash or been serviced in months do you think you're gonna get pulled in with a truck that looks like that or if you're gonna get pulled into a dot scale and have an inspection if you've got a nice clean well-maintained rig traveling down the road and i'm gonna tell you the answer to that and that is a nice looking truck that looks well taken care of is less likely to get pulled into a scale than a turd rolling down the road. It's common sense. It is what it is. So yes, I took the time, washed that old girl up, cleaned her all up, made her look nice. And I take pride in what I do. Excuse me. Yes, I just burped. Take pride in what I do. So it's extremely nice when you're rolling down the road and your rig and your truck looks nice. From the maintenance and, you know, side of things, I know our boss in particular, he gets frustrated with some of the drivers that we currently have or that we've had in the past um, that don't bring up the maintenance situation. So if you work for a company or if you've worked for a company and you bring up maintenance items or things that need to get fixed and they choose not to, you need to find a different company because that in turn will reflect on you if you get pulled into the DOT scale or if you get an inspection and you fail. That affects not only your company but your driver's license. So that's nice about Junior and that's why he gets frustrated because we have a lot of that stuff in stock at the shop. We have a lot of the stuff that you need to keep these rigs DOT compliant and safe running down the road. So why would you not say anything? So anytime I've ever had an issue or have ever had anything that needs to get fixed, they're always on top of it. They get it squared away and uh, make things happen. We are currently en route to Colorado. I will most likely pick you guys up when I get a little closer to Colorado because I have to run through the unbearable state of Nebraska. A failed, failed fields fields and more friggin' fields so there's only so much recording you can do in that situation but i will show you what we're hauling when we get a little closer to destination and as of right now i started my week wednesday i do not have to be there till friday morning which means two day run and friday morning we'll get the stuff unloaded we got riggers we got all kinds of stuff because i have a piece of equipment back here that needs to get unloaded and it is i believe one piece of equipment weighs thirty-three thousand pounds i'm excited to show you guys what the rigging situation is all about what these guys do to get this stuff off the back my trailer and um uh, on to the next adventure
actually arrive to location. So, oh, uh, let me grab my phone. Turn the volume up because I have been in contact with the gentleman here um, as far as the rigger or the setup crew in order uh, to get this thing off my trailer. Oh, all right, it is a beautiful morning here in Colorado. Uh, I'm actually just south of Denver, Colorado, uh, called Oak Ridge. Uh, pretty much like a little suburbs, but we are going to the paper plant, which is right up there. I wish you could see, but I'm sure you've seen on the time lapse. So you could barely see above the top of that building, the mountain ridge, uh, good old Rocky Mountains. Beautiful drive coming in here. It's been a while since I've been out west, uh, so it's kind of uh, kind of cool to change it up every once in a while. Let's see how the tarp did. Yeah, I should flap a little bit out the back. We bucked a good 40, 50, 60 mile an hour wind uh, the entire way. So uh, let's start pulling some bungees, start getting prepped, and uh, let's get this squared away. make a deal when you're unloading stuff on camera. Love it. <laughs> Not nervous at all. There it is. It's only about 150 pounds or anything, man. Yeah, no, only, right? And it's the most pippiest piece on your whole truck. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, he's got that off, guys. We're gonna finish cleaning up our straps and then we've gotta pull around to the front of the building. easier unloads and I will take it. These guys definitely know what they're doing. They do it all the time. This is one of our main rigging crews that travel all over when we do uh, what, what this is. Can't say where it's from, who it is, or what the case is for liability reasons, but uh, these guys, they know what they're doing. Heavy. Yeah, you... I just think oh no, I yeah, yeah. Oh, it's without the cartridge, it's uh, about twenty-eight thousand. That's enough. Yeah, that's enough.
got the Versa left over here, don't they? And he's in. All right. A couple more pieces to go. that ladies and gentlemen that is an empty trailer all right guys so that is absolutely awesome not very often do we have the ability to um, get a group or get a crew that that will help you pull tarps help you get your bungees and stuff off so when you get a rigging crew and stuff like that that's absolutely awesome so all right buddy see you later yes sir Just checking this load out here. Not sure if it's from the same place or not. I think it's someplace new. Um, anyway, so what I was saying is it's absolutely awesome every once in a while. When you get a company or you get a group or you get a rigging crew that realizes in order for them to move on to the next step of what they need to do, they will go above and beyond to help you get your tarps and stuff pulled off. And that doesn't always you know happen you can ask i guess sometimes for help some people will help you but a lot of times they're going to look at you as with their arms crossed and stand there and wait so once then got to be patient got to do what you got to do and uh be on top of your stuff so i am actually bombing straight south in colorado from denver and we are going to pick up another little brick so we will uh we'll pick you up when we get there yep so here's the deal if i'm passing you on the right you guys are officially dumbasses. Okay, so this guy almost lets me get past him and then decides he wants to race. Why do you ass watch, why do you guys do that? You know, is it the fact that you don't want to get passed by a semi or what the case is? But I pass more people on the right side of the interstate these days than I do on the left because you guys refuse to get out of those far left lanes or you get people jam up this second to the left lane and here we are. And then you're like, oh, a semi-slow. Well, if it's so slow, then why am I passing you? And why am I passing you on the right? Get out of the way. Dumbasses, man. Jesus. Like, seriously. I'm, why am I passing you on the right? You know, look at a cluster of fuckery up there, and then you've got this entire lane nobody wants to drive over here. Are we allergic to this lane? Or what is going on, man? Jesus. Dumb. All right, guys. We're picking up bricks. It looks like we have found said location. Looking like a lot of bricks. So since we're gonna tarp this, this is my bungee burrito. So I use one of these pieces of felt in order to uh, tie everything up. They when I go to make my delivery, all I have to do is unroll it and there's all my bungees versus just tossing them in the inside, which is a hot friggin' mess. Okay, so now the felt I had talked about, are these right here, and we'll put those on the corners there and there and same thing up here and that way it will protect uh, the edge of the tarp and nothing gets tore so we are going to put edge protectors on these guys uh, if you're new to the industry anytime you get a sharp edge like this anybody that knows that straps are expensive edge protectors you know save your straps and will prevent those from getting cut because if you were to just go regular strap on that it i guarantee you it is going to cut that and then you got to throw the strap away uh answer to the dot and some other stuff and i was hoping the wind would pick up that would make my job easier i was being sarcastic Okay, last strap. And boom. Then you ask yourself, oh, that seems a little overkill, but every single one of these are individual bricks. And obviously it's only, I don't know, 30 some thousand or low 40s uh, as far as weight is concerned. So obviously the straps are overkill, but uh, you ain't got a choice. And better safe than sorry rolling down the road. Okay, let's get some corners on here. Yep, pretty view. 
you know, and people ask me why, why do you get in the truck in? Because punching a clock, normal nine to five, I guarantee you why I wouldn't get landscape like that, guys. That's what gets in your blood, and it's hard to, it's hard to just walk away from that. It really is. Oh yeah, on the tarps. My favoriteest part. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly if you guys are new to the industry or how you do it, but oh, that's heavy. Like your mom. Anyway, I don't know how you roll your tarps, but we always roll them a certain way that makes life a lot easier when it comes to um, which way the tarps are, you know? There ain't nothing worse. Then you go to roll your tarp out and either the flap's facing the wrong way or it's um, backwards or inside out. So this is the way I was taught. And if it helps you guys possibly, great. If not, great. It is what it is. So obviously we always go, when we fold it, we go to the center, go to the center, go to the center. So I know if I put my inside fold there's that inside fold no seams that'll be the center of the tarp and then we always roll towards our flap which we'll see here in a second i'll show you that way you never have to guess which way your tarp needs to go and on the four footers it's not such a big deal but you get an 8 10 12 foot tarp and you're friggin oh that's close that is close to possibly being able to use just one tarp. Yep, I think I'm going to do the, just that. Okay, now normally, obviously this is brick that sits outside. Normally I would uh, use two tarps to make sure that everything is covered however by the time i put the bungees on the back of here and i'll show you my reasoning uh, once i get down well we are going to spin this around and we are going to use one tarp Now, like I stated one before, got started throwing tarps. Technically, we don't have to tarp this. It's not required, but for safety reasons, we are gonna do just that. Especially on the sides, which I told you, worst case of Jenga ever. And here, the way they do strap these, as you can see, they've got bands going across every single layer of bricks. So by the time, I put my bungee cords, as you can see, there's that time I put my bungee cords and stuff, that ain't going nowhere. Okay. Ho ho! That was almost catastrophic to the freaking face hole yep that's nice now you guys gotta do yourself a favor though just because you tarp a load I see a lot of guys where they'll get to destination and the freaking straps will be flapping flapping in the wind not holding the damn thing on these loads because it's it's very easy to get in that mindset of out of sight, out of mind. So you do still have to stop and do your, you know, in-trip stops, you know, pull off, even if it's just an off-ramp every once in a while, every couple hundred miles, or when you're fueling, or whatever the case is, check those straps, because this tarp, you know, yeah, it kind of hides everything that's going on under here, but it is definitely not going to stop a serious catastrophic failure. Um, it'll help but it's not going to stop something from coming underneath that tarp because you failed to stop and check your straps that's what i'm saying so don't be that guy and last 
freaking bungee. All right, I lied. I got a couple more. Look at that, she's looking all high and tight. We're gonna fix this a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put another one right there. Yeah, just cause I don't wanna look at it. Flapping in my mirror, driving down the road. Okay, put that there. And then a lot of times, guys, what I will do is I will go just from the side rail here over the front and to the back. Just keeps the flap down a little bit and gives it the ability that wind can't get underneath it and start ballooning out your tarps. Otherwise, I've also seen that there's been times where that tarp will work itself out from underneath that and then be flapping in the wind, especially in the back. Oh, two more bungees and then uh, uh, we're heading to the scale. See you in a bit. All right, so we have landed for today. As you can see, we're at the truck stop. Um, it is currently Friday. So this is pretty much gonna be the end of this video, but I told you to put in the comments what you think my weight is. I've got, what did I say, how many bricks? Or how many slats total? Uh, let's double check again. 11, 23, 24 squares of bricks. What's your thoughts? How much do I weigh? Am I legal? And, oh, drop the waist ticket. And, we are we are legal check it out oh sorry about the shadow there it is we are currently 72,580 pounds uh tandems are good drives are good steers are good so you ask yourself well why you couldn't tell by your gauges on like what your weight was and i could i knew i wasn't overweight but I would rather be better safe than sorry. You know, I was only three miles from a truck stop. Now the reason why you go with cat scale is because it is a certified cat scale. If for some crazy reason you are overweight when you roll across the DOT scale, they will actually go to bat for you and they certify and guarantee that their scales are 100. So that's gonna do it. Hope you guys are, you know, appreciate the content as far as the trucking side of things, the on part of the adventure. Yeah, that's that's it. So I really do enjoy making videos, guys. So it's really cool to kind of uh, fill in the gaps when we're not off-roading or bouncing around on the scramblers or out overlanding with the Tacoma. And like we always say, guys, uh, stay tuned. We'll see you next week and on to the next adventure.